Hey everyone, welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. In the Mobile User Acquisition Show, we talk about how to use mobile user acquisition strategies to grow your app quickly and capital efficiently. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is presented by me, Shamant Rao, mobile growth leader and founder and CEO of the mobile growth consulting firm, Rocketship HQ. Each episode includes strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition that you can use to unlock tremendous growth for your app in a sustainable and capital efficient manner. With so many marketing decisions in the pre-iOS 14 world having been made based on LTV to CPI ratios, something that often many marketers forget is that LTV is a made up number. Uh, what do I mean by that? Right? So in an article on Mobile Dev Memo, Eric Sufert argued that LTV is only partially useful for modern mobile marketers because there is no such thing as user lifetime, at least not in a way that can be practically applied to marketing op operations. That's what Eric said. And what I also would add to that is that, yes, uh, it's, LTV can be important. However, it is a projected number almost all the time for it to be useful. Uh, therefore, it is an estimate. And uh, what's also worth noting is that there can be significant subjectivity in LTV calculations as a result of internal corporate politics especially in companies managing portfolios of multiple apps. And sure, you could definitely argue that, hey, I can track my actual D365 LTV, actual D30, actual D45 LTV. Sure, and you know, on a shorter time horizon, it's more realistic than a longer one. But anything that's really far out, D180, D365, I would argue even D60, comes with a huge time lag and that can often be too late for any effective decision making at for daily day-to-day -day marketing operations or campaign management. So for folks that lament the death of the LTV as a result of iOS 14 and IDFA dep deprecation, that's worth noting, LTV was a veneer in the first place. Of course, it had some utility, but it wasn't the perfect holy grail that very many marketers held it up to be. Uh, I have seen companies where different teams calculated LTVs differently, and this was the basis of significant political turf battles when it came to fighting for internal resources, both financial resources and headcount. These are just some of the contentious questions that I have seen come up uh, within teams. One, how do we compare LTV or payback period for an app that has front-loaded monetization and versus one with long-tail monetization? You might have an app that has huge monetization uh, within the first two to three days and some others that monetize over a longer time, longer time period. Uh, on a related note, should we use a longer payback period if an app has extremely strong long tail retention? And if uh, I worked with an app uh, that had a lot of its revenue come after year one, and for them, having a year one LTV would mean that, uh, that they would end up spending very, very little on the user acquisition. And once they decided to extend the payback window to year two, uh, they could invest much, much more in this particular app. Now, oh, another question that comes up is, what sort of statistical model should we use for even for LTV calculations? Should we use conservative estimates or uh, aggressive estimates in our models that we use to calculate our uh, LTVs? Uh, another question that often comes up is that for games that are relatively unproven, that are potentially new launches, should we just give them bigger test budgets or launch budgets until they get to a point where the metrics are proven out? 
and another question is should we allocate budget to a game that is very profitable from its legacy users its older users but seem seemingly has low ltv from its new users should you invest in new user acquisition should you just cut off new user acquisition and sunset it these are not easy questions to answer so another question that comes up is should we use a liberal or strict LTV to CPI approach? In other words, should we discount the target ROAS numbers for games that have strong organics? Should we attribute all of the organics to paid installs, a portion of the organics, none of the organics? There's no one answer to that. Now, again, if you have a wild, wildly viral game or app, should you attribute more of the organics to, to it or less of it? Should you aim to hit your quarterly profitability numbers or monthly ones, or should you sacrifice some of it for longer term growth? All of these questions uh, are assuming that a last click paradigm is an accurate way of looking at your metrics. In a world where self attributing networks sometimes seem to capture excessive impressions and clicks, so as to capture excessive attributions for themselves, the last click paradigm starts to appear increasingly problematic. So as you can see, all of these questions, all of these considerations have a lot of subjectivity involved. And there's just no one right answer to the above, even if the appearance of having precise IDFA and user level data makes it appear that you have very objective and clear metrics. Again, in an ideal world, a lot of decisions would be made strategically with the goal of maximizing the company's long-term profits. However, the reality just tends to be far, far more complex, especially since longer-term growth prospects can just mean different things to different stakeholders in a company. And uh, oftentimes, the LTV calculation that prevails comes down to who plays corporate politics better, especially in an established company with multiple teams or studios competing for resources. Oftentimes, this can just come down to which VP or GM or business head is more articulate or has more allies within a company's resource allocation hierarchy. To some extent, the subjectivity and conflict is just unavoidable when each VP or GM or a business unit head is incentivized to grow their own individual business units, and the CFO and CEO just don't have full visibility or context on how each individual business unit or studio operates. So with all of this in mind, uh, it's worth keeping in mind that, yes, LTV had some utility as a marketing metric for day-to-day -day decisioning. However, oftentimes it pro uh, provided a an incomplete picture at best. And the reality is was never as clear cut as a financial model could uh, make it out to be. So the LTV as a metric might die with the advent of iOS 14 and iOS deprecation, but that might not be a terrible thing. It was at best an imperfect metric to begin with. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here, or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog. Thank you.